AMD R7 240 is sold in store shelves with the GT730 for right around the $50 to $60 price point. So is it worth it? Is it any better than the GT730? Is it worth getting? What kind of games can it play? Stick around and we'll be answering all of those questions very shortly, but first, a little bit more about the card itself. The card that you actually see here is an R5 240 that I got for $40 new online. The only difference between an R5 240 and the R7 240 is that the R5 240 is an OEM equivalent reference design card. As far as the stats go, they are exactly the same. And as far as the stats of this card are concerned, it is the smallest and weakest GCN architecture card made and has 320 stream processors at a 780 megahertz clock with one or two gigabytes of GDDR5. This particular card only has one gigabyte. The card is also sporting a 128-bit memory bus with a memory bandwidth of 72 gigabytes per second, putting it on par to a little bit behind the GK208 version of the GT730 and a little bit faster than the GF108 version. In addition, it has a very meager power consumption of 30 watts, making it ideal for those systems that don't have any extra power to spare. Just like the GT730, we are going to see at what settings, if at all, the games that we will be testing are playable at. And speaking of games, we will be benching Fallout 4, Resident Evil 7, Dying Light, Skyrim, Doom, and of course, Grand Theft Auto 5. To be sure we are getting the best performance possible, we are using the latest Relive Crimson drivers from AMD. So that's enough talking for now, let's get on to the benches. On Fallout 4 at 720p low, we got a solid 32 FPS when liberating some mire lurks. The frame rate held pretty steady, only dropping down to 25 when the grenades got grenading. It's actually a pretty pleasant experience at these settings and is pretty comparable to the good variant of the GT730, which only got 4 FPS higher on average at these settings. In Resident Evil 7 720p low settings, we got a very playable average of 50 FPS. As this game really isn't a Twitch shooter, you might be able to bump a couple of the settings a little bit higher if you're willing to sacrifice a little bit of the frame rate. Admittedly, the game doesn't look great at these settings, and maybe a little bit higher VRAM version of this card would fare better in this title. Dying Light is a great fast-paced zombie survival mixed with a little bit of Mirror's Edge, and as such it likes a fast frame rate. However, this card struggles to keep the frame rate above 30 at 720p low settings, and only managed an average of 28 with it dipping down to 12 FPS during those critical moments. However, in some less demanding areas, the game managed to reach 55 FPS. It may not be a pleasant experience, however the game is still playable on this card. A game that isn't playable, however, is Doom. We dropped the settings to the absolute minimum at 720p with a 50% render scale. The game looks absolutely abysmal and has a frame rate to boot, with it only achieving a 21 FPS average, a 12 FPS minimum, and a 36 FPS max, it isn't really playable. And when the gory gibbs got gruesome, the game seemed to chug like a frat boy on a keg, making everything slow down like a painfully pixelized portrayal of the Matrix's bullet time. Although that can be fun in its own right, it's not the best way to play the game. Skyrim did fare a bit better with this card, managing to play it at 1080p medium settings with a nice average of 31. However, this does compare quite unfavorably to the GK208 GT730, which was able to play the exact same scene at max settings with a slightly higher 33 FPS average. The R7240 might have an ace up its sleeve though, but we'll get to that in a little bit. But finally, we have GTA 5. At 720p minimum settings, we got a respectable 46 FPS average with it only ever dipping down to 27 and it reached as high as 61. Again, the GDDR5 variant of the GT730 trounced the R7240 with an average frame rate of almost double at these settings. Earlier I mentioned that the R7240 had an ace up its sleeve, and what I was referring to was its ability to pair with an APU in dual graphics, giving the computer essentially crossfire between your onboard APU graphics and your R7240. And I did just that. I took the R7240 out of the benchmarking rig and put it in my AMD A8-7670K APU. The APU is a quad core with only a 3.9GHz boost clock with 384 stream processors clocked at 757MHz. The APU is also using 2GB of shared DDR3-1600 for graphics. 
It's actually quite interesting to note that the onboard graphics for this CPU are just as powerful, memory withstanding, than the R7 240. This seems all well and good, however, AMD unfortunately stopped supporting dual graphics in their Crimson drivers, meaning I had to find a version of the Catalyst drivers that supported this while making sure that the drivers weren't too old and out of date. Luckily, after hours of searching, I did manage to find the latest Catalyst drivers they made before switching to Crimson. Anyhow, with that out of the way, I began benchmarking again to see if we would see any improvements in our frame rates. As you can see, surprisingly the frame rates in all but one of the titles actually got worse. This can probably be attributed in part due to a weaker CPU. This is amplified by the fact that Crossfire is very CPU intensive and when paired with a weak CPU the frame rates will suffer. However, the main thing driving the lower frame rates is most likely the drivers. Most people liken AMD cards to fine wine because over time with driver improvements their cards get better and better and better. However, with these old Catalyst drivers the card is more like old milk. So it just goes to show how important good drivers actually are. Anyhow, so that's what you can expect from the R7 240. It can play most modern AAA titles if you're willing to drop the settings and resolutions quite a bit. I can't, however, recommend that anybody spend money on a new one. It was a great little card for its day, but its day is finally up. So, thank you folks for watching, and make sure to stick around for next time when we test these two tenacious tried and true champions in a fantastic frame filled fight to the finish. So, as always, thank you folks for watching, and may your frame rates be high and your prices low. And I'll catch you folks next time.